welcome to my channel. Today we look at another method of solving a system of linear equations and this is the Gauss-Jordan elimination method. Now lastly, in the previous video we looked at transforming a matrix to reduced raw echelon form and that knowledge would be very much useful to us today. So how do we solve a system by Gauss-Jordan elimination? So to solve a system by Gauss-Jordan elimination, the first thing you do is you extract the augmented matrix from the given system and then transform that augmented matrix to reduced raw echelon form. And then by use of back substitution, solve the system. So that's, those are the, the three steps that I've written here. That we extract the Gumeria matrix from the system, then transform that Gumeria matrix to reduce the raw echelon form, and then you use back substitution to solve the system. So let's just put this in practice by looking at one example. So the example that I want us to look at is this. And the question is, use Gauss Jordan elimination to solve this system. So the first thing we do, we extract the augmented matrix. I can see three, two, negative one, then one, three, two, negative one, then one, one, four, negative three, eleven, and then two, no, negative two, three, 5.21. Now I've extracted the augmented matrix. This is the augmented matrix. This one here is our augmented matrix. Now with this augmented matrix, what we were supposed to do is to transform it to reduced echelon form transform it to reduced echelon form or reduced raw echelon form. And then after transforming, we shall now use back substitution to solve the system. So we already know how to re transform matrix to reduce echelon form, but I'll repeat the steps here so that in our next example, we will move faster. So, to transform this matrix to reduced raw echelon form, the first thing we want, we must put in our mind, is that every leading element must be a one. So this leading element here, we make it one. How do we do that? By taking row one and then dividing by three. So if I divide row one by three, I would have one here, two over three, negative a third, then a third. So that gives me this matrix. And remember we said that whenever you are doing this type of question, write the row operation that you are carrying out. So my row operation is here. Now, I now have this matrix, I have this created leading one. I use it, remember that this leading one must be the only and zero entry in its column. So use it to create a zero here and a zero here. How do I get a zero here? By taking row two minus row one. How do I get a zero here? By taking row three plus two row one. I'm using this element. So this is easy. Row two minus row one. This will be this. This one minus one will be zero. Four minus two thirds will give me 10 over three. Negative three minus, minus a third, that is negative three plus a third will give me negative eight over three. So I do the same until I get that two over three. Now let me come to this third row. Row three plus two row one. So negative two plus 
2 modulo by 1, this one gives me 0. 3 plus 2 modulo by this, 4 by 3. This is 13 over 3. I do the same for the entire row and I get this matrix. Now, I now want, have this leading element here, want it to be 1. So that means row 2 times 3 over 10. Times 3 over 10 gives me this matrix with a 1 here. You can you say 1 is there? That's what I wanted. Of this leading one, I use it to create a zero in this position. Get a zero in this position. So to create a zero in this position, that position is in row three. So row three minus 13 over three of row two. This minus 13 over 3 of this gives me 0. And then 13 over 3 here, minus 13 over 3 of negative 4 over 5. And what you notice is that this will be positive. This will be positive. And then it will be 15. So this will go there into 15 five times. Five times this will be 65. And this is, this was four. Four times 13 will be 52. So this is 117 over 15 that I have here. Doing the same gives me this. 117 over 15. So I'm done with this. And I'm also done with this. Remember, I was using this one. Where was that? I used this one to create a zero. So how do we do that? Let me just repeat what I did here. Because I wanted a zero in this position. And then I want a zero in this position. So for me to get a zero in this position, I took row one minus two over three of row two. Then to get a zero in this position, I took row three minus 13 over three of row two. And that is what gave me this matrix. That's what gave me this matrix with a zero in this position, then a zero in this position. Now, so I'm done with this column and this column. I come this row and I can see that this is the bit element and that it's not one. So to make it one, I have to multiply row three by 15, over 107. So let me do that. You have a one here. You have a one in this position. So this one times 15 over 107. This one times 15 over 107. I have a one and a one. Now, now that I have this one. I use it to create a zero here and another zero here. How do I create a zero in row one? I will have to take row one minus three over 15, row three. And I would have to take row two plus four over five, row three. That gives me zero and zero in that position. 
And so I have my matrix transformed to reduced row echelon form. So now how do I get the solutions? I can see that this was A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. So that means A is negative two, B is four, and C is one. So when you solve, when we solve, and it's always good to solve from the bottom because in some cases, it will not be this easy to see. So C is one, B is four, and C is negative two. So we can write our solution this way. We can write our solution there. So let's look at uh, the next example. And we are still using Gauss Jordan elimination. And so this time will not take a lot of time trying to reduce the matrix to reduce echelon form because we already know how to do that. So the, mat the system given to us is this. We extract the augmented matrix and this is our augmented matrix. This is the augmented matrix. We already have a one in this position. So we use it to create zeros elsewhere in the column. In other words, we have row two plus row one will give us zero things. Let's just do that. This will be zero, this will be negative one, this will be negative four, and this will be negative three. And that's what I have in this row. And then row three minus five. Row one, row three minus five, row one. So this minus five of this will be zero. Negative 13 minus five of negative three, the same as negative 13 plus 15, which will be three. And then 13 minus five of one would be eight. And then it's a sixteen minus five of two would be six. That's what we have. So we now have to make this element the positive one because the leading element must be one in uh, for us to transform a matrix to reduced echelon form. The leading element must be one. So to, for us to have a one in this position. 1 row 2 times negative 1. So if I multiply this by negative 1, now positive 1, positive 4, positive 3 here. Yeah. Now this leading element here should be used to create a 0 here, another 0 here. How do you get a 0 here? You would get a 0 there by checking row 1 plus 3 or 2. So row one plus three row two. So this is one plus three one by zero would be one. This one plus um, this negative three plus three one by one would be zero. And then this one plus three one by four would be thirteen. This two plus three one by three would be eleven. And how do I get a zero here? By taking row three minus two row two row three minus three minus two or two so this two minus two row one row two element in row two that give me zero this eight minus two multiplied by four give me zero 
and the same 6 minus 2 rows times 3 will be 0. So we have this final matrix. This final matrix is in the reduced row echelon form as we required. So we are supposed to solve, and we, you see, when we were looking at Gaussian elimination, we said that whenever we have zeros equals to zero, then that system of linear equations would have infinitely many solutions. Would have infinitely many solutions. So this system has the system that has given us this matrix has infinitely many solutions. So what do we see here? What we are seeing here is that x, see this was the value of x, this was the value of y, and this was the value of z. So I'm seeing x plus 13 z is 11. x plus 13 z is 11. I'm also seeing this was x. So this is y plus 4z is 3. y plus 4z is 3. Remember the leading variables here, x and y. X and Y are leading variables, while Z is a free variable. So whenever we have this, then the free variables are assigned parameters. And then the leading variables are solved in terms of the free variables. The leading variables are solved in terms of in terms of the free variables. So that means we should solve x in terms of z and y in terms of z, and then we assign z a parameter, where a parameter is any number. So I've said this shows that the above system has infinitely many solutions. To solve this, we write the variables corresponding to the leading entries in terms of other variables, in terms of the free variables. So let's assign z, which is a free variable. Let's assign it t. So t here is any number. t could be 2, could be 10, could be negative 3, and so on. So if z is t, what is y? Go back to the equation and make y the subject. y would be 3 minus 4t. What about x? x would be 11 minus 13t. Then we just need to write our solution as a vector. x, just a small correction here. This was the entry. This was the entry. So x with z was t. Y was 3 minus 40 and X was 11 minus 30. Let's look at another example. And we are still using Gauss Jordan elimination. We are given this system and we are told using Gauss Jordan elimination, find the general solution to the system. And this is a system. So the first thing we do is to extract the augmented matrix. And when I did that, I, this was the augmented matrix. And then transform it to reduced raw echelon form. And that's what I got, this is what we get. So just try it your own time to transform this as, as exercise. Transform this to, this matrix to reduced, Echelon form and see that you get this as your final matrix. Once you have this final matrix, which ones are your leading entries? From what I see, and you must be seeing the same. This is a leading entry. This another one. This another one. This another one. So x1 is a leading variable. And you can see x2 is another leading variable. 
x3 is a living variable. This was x4. x5 is a leading variable. So the leading variables are x1, x2, x3, and x5. They have to be solved in terms of the free variables. The free variables are x4 and x6. So what I did was I just extracted this was x1, x2, x3, negative x1, negative 3 over 2, x4. This was x5, negative 11 over 4, x6 is equals to 9. Then here, this was x2, x4, x6. So I have x2 plus a half x4 minus 3 over 4 x6 is equals to 3. I do the same for this. This is x3 plus a half x4 plus 11 over 4 x6. And then finally, this is x5 minus x6. And that gives me these equations. Now with these equations, I can see the leading variables and I can see the free variables. The free variables are the ones which are not leading. So x4 is free, x6 is also free. So I assign them parameters. I say, for example, that x4 is s and x6 be t and then solve the, the rest. x5 is 4 plus x6. Make it the subject. x5 would be 4 plus x6, but x6 is t. So this is x5. x4 is this. Is s. Again, come to this x3, make it the subject. x3 is negative 7 minus 11 over 4 t minus a half s and that's what I have that's what I have because this is a half s and this is 11 over 4 t what about x2 make it the subject it will be 3 plus 3 over 4 t minus a half s. And that's what I have. And again, make x1 the subject. And then after you've done that, write your solution as a vector. Write your solution as a vector. And so this is what I have. This is my solution. So, and remember this solution, you can have it, I have decided to have it in decimals. You can also have it in, in fractions. And I've also decided to have it as a, a column vector. You may want to have it in a row form. That's how we solve by course Jordan elimination.